coming up on New Center 16 at 5. Hundreds of schools closed, impassable streets, and snowdrifts six feet high. Welcome to the blizzard of 2011. From snow emergencies across Michiana to dozens of canceled flights, we've got team coverage of this massive storm. Plus, wait until you see how it hits Chicago's famed Lakeshore Drive. How does this storm stack up to the infamous blizzard of 1978? It's all coming up next. From WNDU, your severe weather station, this is News Center 16 at 5 in high definition. Good evening, I'm Maureen McFadden. And I'm Terry McFadden. Hundreds of thousands of kids and adults had a day off today as Michiana was blasted, like much of the rest of the country, by a massive winter storm. Now, some were hit worse than others, but no one was spared completely. So how bad was it? And are we done? Chief Meteorologist Mike Hoffman begins our coverage tonight. It was definitely a big snowstorm. I think as you'll see over the next uh, 90 minutes, we're going to compare this to some other uh, past storms. It was a marginal blizzard. It wasn't a major blizzard, but it was still a, a huge storm. We're not quite done as far as the lake effect is concerned. You can see how there's one main band that's been hitting uh, the Gary area. It's now shifting into Valparaiso, but you will notice how right at the end of this loop, we're starting to see uh, over the lake, the, uh, the, the areas of snow are kind of coming out of the uh, northwest. And so we're going to see this whole area kind of uh, taper off, move to the east and end as we head through the evening hours. So here's the way things are shaping up then as far as uh, how we're looking at uh, the low tonight. Minus three, once we become partly cloudy and these lake effect snow showers end, we're looking at a low of minus three and then a high of only 12 tomorrow. Wind chills from midnight right through the day tomorrow will be below zero. We'll talk more about uh, this storm and the forecast coming up. Thanks, Mike. If you tested the streets in South Bend, you know some of them are practically impassable. Meantime, the main streets are in much better shape. Storm Team 16 Stephanie Stang is live in South Bend. And Stephanie, hopefully we've seen the worst of it. Hopefully, Mo, we have seen the worst of it. If you take a look behind me here, you can see that these main roads here are looking a lot better here. This is Michigan Street, where, what we're looking at right now, but there's a big difference here to some of these side streets in the alleyways. Uh, some of them have barely been touched and very hard to get through. Now, today for the third day, department heads from the South Bend uh, City area met to refine their plan of action to battle this storm. A total of 60 trucks have been on the road with all the departments working together to clear the streets, yet still many sidewalks aren't clear with people walking in the street. Plus, we caught up with several people stranded or needing a push after getting stuck in the snow. This is a chore, so they're doing a good job. They're doing a great job. He's only about 15 pounds, so you're walking in this stuff, two feet of snow or even, you know, a half a foot is over his head. So to find our kind of path um, when we can. But they always leave all of these in here, not plow. Like Wayne Street and a couple other streets over here, they're not plow. When it's going to come, it's going to pass. Let's do what you got to do, and it'll be over with. Now, till about an hour ago, St. Joe County was under a snow emergency, meaning travel was not recommended and to only leave the house if you really needed to. And Mo, I can certainly testify to that. Uh, coming up at six, you'll see uh, me pushing a car out of the snow, and I also had to get a push myself at least twice this morning. So some of these side roads, like I was saying earlier, really hard to get through and we found that out ourselves when we were driving out and around this morning. Right, but kudos to the street departments because they've been out oh, there doing their best. That's now, for sure. 16 hour shifts, like I said. Lots of work. And you mentioned a lot of the sidewalks yeah. aren't shoveled, but it can't be safe to be walking in the streets either. That's for sure. Um, earlier today, we saw a lot of people in downtown South Bend, which was practically empty, just walking right on Main Street there. But uh, that's why the city is asking that if you can to clear your sidewalk and they're doing the best they can with some of those private contractors they brought in to clear the sidewalks also. All right, Stephanie staying live from South Bend. Thanks a lot. Well, a plow driver was taken to the hospital this morning after his vehicle was rear ended by a semi. It happened on US 31 south of Lakeville just before 11 this morning. The in-depth plow was going about 30 miles an hour when the semi rear-ended it, which was going about 45 miles an hour. The semi driver said the plow was kicking up so much snow that he couldn't see it. Both vehicles slid into a ditch. The plow driver was taken to the hospital with unknown injuries. The semi driver was ticketed for following too closely. 
While most Michiana schools were closed and several hundred businesses too, there were plenty of people who still had to go to work today, and that meant a very tricky commute. News Center 16's Joel Skipper takes us on the road. At 5 a.m. Wednesday, plow trucks clear the parking lot to the Speedway gas station, almost in a synchronized dance of precision. All Anthony Stockwell can do is watch and wait. Maybe I'll bump into someone who can give me a ride, but I can't walk from here. I could try walking down Cleveland, but it'd be pretty dangerous. He's not the only person in the area who's stranded getting nowhere fast. The majority of cars on the streets this time of morning are the plow trucks. They've had a long night, and it's not even daylight. I got six hours of sleep yesterday, so it's been kind of a long night and long to be a long day. Oh, it's not real bad. I've seen worse. I've been through the blizzard of 78, and this is, yeah, close to it, but not bad. I see the street crews are out, and they're doing an excellent job. Once a path is cleared or salted, it needs to be done again. The few early morning drivers we spoke with had mixed reactions to the storm, some of them trying to head to work, but having a tough time. It was just a couple cars and myself on the road, so I didn't really have any problem getting here until I got to this point. As for Anthony, not only is he relying on a ride to work, but people are relying on him for the same thing. I drive for Transpo. Yeah, I was supposed to be in at 5.30 today. So you're a driver for Transpo, the bus, and now you're stuck waiting for the bus. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> but buried amongst the strong winds and mounds of snow is a hint of optimism. Just be careful and just keep it steady and just remember it's one day closer to spring. <laughs> and it wasn't long until someone offered to bring Anthony to his work so others can get to theirs. In St. Joe County, Joel Skipper, News Center 16. Police say there were countless slide offs this morning. Meantime, there are already some schools closed for tomorrow, too. And you can see that list running at the bottom of your screen and on our website, WNDU.com. The rural areas of Michiana were some of the hardest hit, with many snowdrifts piling several feet high. The Kosciuszko County Sheriff's Department says 90 to 95 percent of the rural roads were closed by snow this morning when the plowing began, many with four to five foot drifts. While many roads, including those around downtown Warsaw, were empty as many people stayed home, police still responded to dozens of accidents, mostly fender benders and slide offs. There were also many abandoned vehicles on county roads. Coming up at 530 and 6, Mark Peterson will join us for a closer look at some of the hardest hit rural areas here in Michiana. Life at South Bend Regional Airport is starting to take off again after airlines canceled 46 flights in the last two days. Officials say today's lighter winds and less snowfall helped plows tackle and maintain the airport's 8,000 feet of runway. Those plows have been working round the clock since about 3 p.m. yesterday. Every two hours, the airport uses a friction testing device to calculate stopping distances for planes landing at 120 miles an hour. However, most of our cancellations were due to worse weather in hubs like Chicago and Detroit. Obviously, when a big snow event hits your larger airports, the capacity goes, uh, and that has a ripple effect, as everybody knows, uh, going throughout the aviation system and throughout the country. And officials remind travelers to contact your airline before heading to the airport. Loyalty to the job, it's the best way to describe how 14 South Bend fire recruits spent the day proving they have what it takes. The idea came after instructors canceled class, freeing up the recruits day so they could dig the city out one fire hydrant at a time. Storm Team 16's Kevin Lewis followed the pack from block to block and Kevin uh, pretty big undertaking. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Terry. After all, South Bend has nearly 5000 fire hydrants. That's nearly 400 for every single new recruit. Of course, it's near impossible for them to hit each one, but Every hydrant cleared is a step in the right direction. The recruits were dressed from head to toe in their fire gear, but forget the axes. These guys came armed with shovels today. Halfway through their 20-week academy program, the recruits worked with firefighters from across the city. It may seem harsh. It could also appear to be a waste of time, but fire officials would strongly disagree. That's because in the minute or two it could take firefighters to clear a covered hydrant, a home fire could quadruple in size. The fire were to be at nighttime, it may also be very difficult to spot. And no matter how much training or brawn these guys bring along, water is key to fighting every blaze. If you have a fire hydrant in front of your house, please go out and uh, clear it out because it's for your advantage. If we have to come, then we won't be hampered by um, not being able to get water uh, to put the fire out. 
And fire officials recommend digging about a three foot radius around your hydrant and if possible a path to the nearest street or sidewalk. And while the city cannot fine you for refusing to help out, they say it's in your best interest because the hydrant on your street is there to protect you and your home. All right, what about disabled folks or the elderly? Uh, you know, we shouldn't expect them to go out and shovel the hydrants. What are they expected to do? Yeah, Terry, well, if you fit into that category, you can call the city's non emergencies number and someone will come and clear your hydrant for you. That number is 574 235 92. 55. And you may uh, meet uh, one of the new recruits. <laughs> it's a, it'll be a good community event there. All right, Kevin, thanks a lot. Well, this massive storm stretch uh, from as far north as Maine to as far mm -hmm. south as New Mexico, and much of the nation was paralyzed by snow and ice. But many people we spoke to say it doesn't compare to the infamous blizzard of 1978, which Terry and I remember well. Yep. But how do the numbers stack up? Mike joins us now from the Weather Lab with some perspective. Mike? Not even close. <laughs> There's no question about it. I lived through it just like you guys, and uh, there was just no comparison. That was a major blizzard. This was just marginally a blizzard, barely hitting the criteria for being called a blizzard, but it was. And uh, here's the way they uh, shape up. Officially in South Bend, 12.3 inches out of this uh, latest blizzard, 35.8 in 1978. Drifting, I have heard reports of uh, six, seven foot drifts down in Cass County, but basically it's four foot drifts or more in most areas, but 10 foot drifts or more in 1978. The uh, peak wind, 41 miles per hour. Yesterday, 60 miles per hour back in 78. And as far as the length of the storm, really, this last one only lasted the night. We're talking about eight hours. Uh, 1978, the peak of that storm was raging for 36 hours, and overall, snow fell over a five-day period in 1978. So uh, no comparisons. This was a big storm. Uh, but uh, not like the one in 1978. We're going to compare it to the one back in January coming up at 530 and have my forecast in a few minutes. All right, Mike, thanks a lot. Well, Michigan was hit hard, but it was certainly no picnic in Chicago either. Check out Lakeshore Drive where hundreds of cars and trucks got stuck in the heavy snowfall. Believe it or not, these pictures actually show an improvement to what the famous roadway looked like last night. These photos were taken this morning when about 300 cars were stuck. Last night, the number was about 900. And the wind in Chicago was unbelievable. The Weather Channel's Jim Cantori was trying to do a live shot early this morning when he was nearly knocked off his feet from gusts of 70 miles per hour. Those winds caused plenty of damage, including at Wrigley Field. Two streets near the iconic ballpark were closed last night because the storm blew down tiles from the top of the press box. And stay with News Center 16 as we bring you much more on the blizzard of 2011. Mike will have your complete forecast coming up and we'll continue to bring you our team coverage throughout our 90 minutes of news. More to come on New Center 16. The chaos is reaching a fever pitch in Egypt as warring sides continue their violent protests. Plus, predicting a heart attack, doctors say a new warning system is saving lives. And there may be a ton of snow, but that's not stopping Notre Dame from stacking their football team with talent. The latest on National Signing Day. From WNDU, your severe weather station, Chief Meteorologist Mike Hoffman has your Storm Team 16 forecast. Well, it's tough for many of us just to get out of the driveway today and make it to the streets. And obviously, this is a scene many of us uh, caught as the drifting snow uh, going across your sidewalk, going across your driveway, caused a lot of work to be done. And this is our eyewitness reporter, Lindsey Ross, uh, caught this picture in his yard. Now, get ready for the cold. Once we get the lake effect snow showers to end as we head through the middle of the night, and I think they'll quickly end. We'll show you the radar coming up. Then we're going to turn partly cloudy and cold. In fact, clear by 7 a.m. So minus three wind chills probably 10 to 15 below at that point, and they're generally going to stay in that vicinity. Below zero, no question through the day tomorrow. Temperature of only nine with sunshine by noon. 10 degrees by 6 p.m. We're going for a high tomorrow of 12. If we're lucky, it'll get to 13, 14, 15, but I, I think it's probably going to stay in the very low teens, no question there. Here's the weather index. We are going to drop it, obviously, but keep it disruptive because there are still some lake uh, effect snow showers west of South Bend mainly, and there is still some blowing and drifting in the outlying areas, not nearly as bad as last night. But nonetheless, uh, when you have snow uh, on the ground in the countryside with no trees and buildings around, it continues to blow across all those county roads, and some of them are still impassable. Let's go outside, see what our Skyview 16 cameras look like right now out at the blue 
Blue Chip Casino. Well, it's snowing in Michigan City. 25 degrees. You can see the uh, band of snow has shifted east now into a uh, northern Laporte County and some of that snow is going to shift farther east. I think uh, many of us will get a coating to an inch as we head through tonight. Some spots west of South Bend still perhaps two inches. Here's the way it shapes up right now in South Bend. It's not snowing at all. In fact, you can see a little bit of sunshine way off in the distance. We had some sun earlier, but it is now cloudy. 23 degrees. Rest of the numbers look like this. Wind chill is at 12 right now, but again, that is going below zero tonight as the temperature drops and the winds stay up there. They're northerly at 10 right now. Uh, barometer is on the rise. Here are the temperatures around the region and you can see uh, areas off to the east are the coldest. 19 in Sturgis back to the west where you're getting a little bit of wind off the water. It's 27 in Benton Harbor. Valparaiso, you're at 25 degrees right now. Live Super Doppler 16 showing this uh, band of snow. The main one right now has shifted east. It's still affecting Valparaiso as well, but you can see as that continues to come east, what we're going to see, you can kind of pick it out there. There's some now bands setting up like this because this main band is just going to blow apart as it comes east and we'll have multiple fingers come out and then those will all end as we head through the overnight hours. Here's the bigger picture. Uh, Doppler Network shows the snow at 9 a.m. this morning, still ongoing. The storm moved away and the lake effect has been uh, coming into northwest Indiana the whole time, but you saw right there at the end started shifting off to the east. So here's what the future looks like with 16 future track. We'll have that lake effect snow uh, continuing, but then quickly ending because look how quickly the winds shift. By 7 a.m., they're already out of the west, and that'll shut off the lake effect snow. They become west to southwest tomorrow. High pressure, though, giving us sunshine. We have two nice days to dig out. Cold, but at least some sunshine is expected. Uh, next system uh, just bringing us a chance of snow over the weekend. Here's my Storm Team 16 forecast for all of Michiana. For tonight, lake effect snow showers quickly ending, a coating to an inch or two. In some areas, not everywhere though, low of minus three with wind chills below zero. Mostly sunny, breezy and cold tomorrow, high of 12. Wind chills still way below zero. Tomorrow night, clear and quite cold. Same wind chills, low of minus three in the 7A forecast. Shows Friday uh, becoming partly sunny, high of 18. Chance of some snow over the weekend, I think most of that misses us. And then a chance of some uh, lake effect snow showers as we head into next week. No big warm ups coming. Back with more news right after this. Stones, bottles and firebombs were flying today as supporters and opponents of Egyptian President Mubarak battled in Cairo's main square. One of the firebombs set a tree ablaze on the grounds of the famed Egyptian museum, which houses mummies and other Egyptian antiquities. The violence escalated after about 3,000 Mubarak supporters broke through a human chain of anti-government protesters trying to defend the thousands gathered in the square. Scores of wounded were carried to a makeshift clinic near the square. Back here at home, Warsaw Orthopedics manufacturer Zimmer is cutting jobs. So far, Zimmer isn't revealing how many jobs are being cut or if more layoffs are coming. Officials cite an ongoing company restructuring as the reason. But Zimmer also says future hiring is expected to exceed these cuts. Zimmer designs, develops, and makes artificial joint implants such as hip and knee replacements. A well-known Mishawaka restaurant is closing up shop. Between the Buns on Lincoln Way East will serve its final customers this Sunday and close at 4 p.m. An email was sent out to patrons yesterday. The owner says the economy isn't the only reason for the closing, but it's a factor. The other Between the Buns locations will stay open. Snow or no snow, today also marks National Signing Day, where high school seniors sign their letters of intent to play their respective sport in college. And the big focus is on football and Notre Dame. Angelo DiCarlo joins us now from the newsroom. And Ange, this was Brian Kelly's first recruiting class, his first full one, and it turned out to be a pretty big one. Yeah, no question about it, Terry. The Irish produced the ninth best recruiting class in the country today. In total, there are 23 players coming on board for Notre Dame, with four-star lineman Troy Nicholas being the latest addition. Leading the charge was the focus on defense, with the likes of five-star linebacker E. Shaq Williams, four-star defensive end Aaron Lynch, and five-star defensive end Stephon Tuitt. The last two decommitted from Notre Dame before ultimately coming back to the Irish. Brian Kelly's message on the recruiting trail focused on three things. First, getting that Notre Dame degree. Second, being a part of the Notre Dame family, the Notre Dame team, and winning together. And third, a person who wants to develop athletically, socially, academically, and spiritually. If we didn't get a connection from you on one of those three things, we're moving to the next guy. But by and large, we got a great connection with all of our players. So when, when some of the players lost sight of that, 
we would have to go back in and talk about those three things. We didn't promise playing time. We didn't promise 10 national championships. We didn't promise anything. We told them this is what we're about and this is what you'll get if you come to Notre Dame. And it was also a big day on the high school front. There were no press conferences today due to the weather, but here are some of the big names locally who will play at the next level. Clay's Trey Clifton is going to Miami of Ohio. Michael Curtis of Mishawaka to Ohio. And Lakeshore's Dylan Brooks will play at Eastern Michigan with teammate Joel Noel headed to Moorhead State. We'll have much more on the signings of these players as they happen over the next week and much more on National Signing Day coming up at 6 p.m. More news right after this. The latest health news for you and your family. This is Maureen's Medical Moment. These two things could end up saving your heart and saving your life. Details next in the Medical Moment. Pressure and pain, one in your chest, the other in your arm. They're not the only signs, but they're the most predominant signs that you're having a heart attack. Now there are two medical firsts that can detect heart attacks and save lives. Danny, it's a scene that plays out across America every day. A heart attack strikes, a heart stops. Three months and several stents later, doctors say Carl could be implanted with a new heart attack warning system called the Guardian Alert System. This is really revolutionary technology. This pacemaker-like device is implanted in the chest. A wire extending into the heart continuously analyzes heart rhythm looking for signs of a blocked coronary artery. This is looking for subtle changes that are associated with a decrease in blood flow to a region of the heart. If the system detects a heart problem, the device vibrates in the chest. A pager the patient carries with them also flashes and beeps and tells them to call 911. And when you get to the doctor with chest pains, instead of their stethoscope, they may pull out the world's smallest ultrasound machine. It can immediately show doctors if you're suffering from heartburn or heart attack. I can turn it around and show the patient their own heart. And when a patient looks at their own heart, it really makes an impression. So if their walls are too thick or if one of their valves is leaking. Using 3D technology, UC San Diego Dr. Tony DeMaria can see the size, shape, and function of the heart in real time. Whether you're at home, at the doctor's office or in the OR, new technologies that can bring peace of mind and save lives. I'm just glad I'm healthy and alive. The best way to keep your heart going is to practice prevention and know your heart health. You can calculate your risk of having a heart attack by logging on to WNDU.com and clicking the link on the big red bar. While well, the FDA has ignored the advice of its own advisory committee and will not approve the weight loss drug Contrave. Contrave is the third weight loss drug the FDA has rejected within the past year. While clinical trials showed about half of patients on the drug lost about 5% of their body weight, it was not a large enough benefit to outweigh potential risk for high blood pressure. The company that makes the drug will now be required to do larger studies of Contrave's safety. Terry? Thanks, Mo. Well, coming up, since we just had a blizzard, this next story may be the most important one of all. Will we have an early spring or more winter? We'll tell you what the famous groundhog had to say after the break. Well, if you've had enough of this snow, don't worry. There's good news tonight from the world's most famous groundhog. Despite the snow, Punxsutawney Phil emerged around dawn today to make his 125th annual weather forecast. And thank goodness he's predicting an early spring. Before today, Phil had seen his shadow 98 times and hadn't seen it 15 times since 1887. News Center 16 at 530 is next with Mo. Here's a preview.